Hey everybody, this is Rob here with Rome City, and today I'm joined by a very special guest. I'm joined by Antonio Cincotta, who is the current head coach at Sampdoria Femminile in Serie A. Antonio, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, and then hello to everybody. So not only is Antonio the head coach at Sampdoria, but he is also the director of academics here at Rome City, and he is our professor for Calcio Methodology. Last year, I was a student myself, and I took his class, and I can genuinely tell you, it is a class unlike anyone I've ever taken before in my life. Um, it was incredible to just hear his mind and his point of view on the game, whether it be tactical, whether it be about his coaching style, things like that. So I want to get into all of that as well. But before we do that, uh, Antonio, why don't you just say a little bit about yourself and also a little bit about your history and how you kind of got to where you are now. Yeah. Thank you. First of all, thank you for what you said about me and my lessons. It's a pleasure for me. What can I say about me? I, I'm a lucky man. I'm a lucky coach. I think I'm lucky because in my life, in my career, I, I found and met special players they make me a winning coach of course just because they were so good i won in a row serie c serie b scudetto two italy cups and one super cup and we played uh, four times the champions league and three times we reached the round of 16. yeah man. all of these in a row so this if you think you are special it's not true this only means that you had the good players course, yeah. for the good of times course. so uh, sometimes we overuse the coach and the idea that the coach can make completely difference. The coach can have the process, of course, yes, but the leaders and the best of the project are and have to be the players. So I found special players. Of and I course. want to say thank you to of them course. about this. <laughs> of course, there have been plenty of amazing players out there that aren't able to succeed together. So that's very humble of you. But of course, the coach has to put it all together. Um, now, that's amazing that you said that because you did. You've gone from Serie C to Serie B to yeah. Serie A, which is incredible growth. And before he was the coach of Sampdoria, Antonio was the coach of Fiorentina. Uh, he was there for five years, I believe. Yeah. Five years. He accomplished amazing things. As he said, he won a Scudetto, uh, two Coppa Italias, made the Champions League four times, uh, which is amazing. Uh, but before I talk about Fiorentina a little bit, why don't you talk about the growth of the women's game? Because Serie A Femminile right now is doing very well. It's on the up, but it hasn't always been that way. So what's the difference between when you started to where you are today? Yeah, I think... Thank you, it's an interesting question. In Italy, the women movement is raising a lot. Of course. And only 10 years ago, when I was the head coach uh, in Serie B, the level was not like this. Now we are, we are full of uh, professional clubs, uh, op and these clubs open uh, inside uh, the women department. And so this makes a complete difference. And also, in the last season, the Italian Federation decided to transform the league now the league is turned on a professional league yes and this gave to the players the honor of what they did in the last 10 years maybe yeah. more and they achieved a kind of dream that they deserve to have for the effort they put in every single in every single seconds of their lives so i'm very proud that they achieved this uh, status of professional because uh, gave back to them what they did for everybody in women's soccer yeah. As he mentioned last year, it did become a professional league. So Serie A Femminile is now considered yeah. a professional league, which is incredible. And, you know, you see a lot of these teams, uh, the big teams, of course, and some of the smaller teams, but they're getting more funds, they're getting more fans, yeah. they're getting more crowd. They, they're just, it's really improving and it's really growing, which is yeah. amazing to see. The fan base is, is raising. Uh, uh, you have to handle your social media of because uh, people write, people want to know. Uh, there is a women fantasy soccer. Yeah, so Fanta someone asks you, women you will put this player or the other player because tell me because I <laughs> so everything is completely changed. It's very funny and, and so it's uh, it's something special now. Yeah, and I think we deserve it. So you are currently in your second season at Sampdoria. Yeah. Before that, you were with Fiorentina for five years, as we talked about. Yeah. During that stretch, you really turned Fiorentina into one of the top teams in Italy. Truly, you were you were fighting for titles, won a title in the Champions League. When you joined Sampdoria, a little bit different of a project. Yeah. You were taking on this new team, and last year you were really just fighting to avoid the bottom. However, uh, they did finish sixth place last year, one place above Fiorentina, his old team. So last year was a success. This yeah. year, good start to the season. They are two for two. Um, two wins out of two, of course. So why don't you just tell me a little bit about that transition, going from a team that you felt was really at the top in control to then having to change tactics a little bit and go for a team where not always were you the best team in the game, but you had to find a way to make yeah. it happen. 
I think it's a funny story. It's a funny story because uh, when I joined Fiorentina, many people said, uh, I never work with the high level club. Uh, we don't know if he's uh, the core person for the core moment for the core clubs and things like this. So I challenged myself yeah. to try to be the best version of myself, you know, and work it because with the player, with the club, with everybody, with the supporter, we won. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> five amazing years. We won Super Cup against Juventus, so uh, a special game for, for people of Florence. When this experience was finished, I joined another experience in Sampdoria, mm -hmm. where the only goal was don't get, try to don't get a relegation. Of course, different And save challenge. the team and stay in Serie A. And again, people start to say, but maybe he's not a correct person because now was... You, <laughs> he's you, too good. Yes. He was before and not good enough, yes. now he's too good. He used to win, he used to have good players. How can he be in a team without players? Because in the beginning, we, had, <laughs> we were without roster. Yeah. So we just take the players without contract. So again, it was a challenge to show to everybody, but first to myself, that you have to have many masks with you yeah be yourself but try to use the current mask for the current time for the current situation uh, currently i have the mask of the fighter because if you want to stay in Serie A, if you want to don't get a relegation you need to be a fighter and you need to use all of your muscles all of your energy to push and to bring your team toward the the success that you would like to achieve and we did last year and we want to do it again this season of course. And then last year, you did pretty well. So now you kind of have new expectations. But it's an early season. Yeah. It's just begun. We don't have to talk about yeah. that just yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the beginning. So I would like to mention, uh, you know, the difference between going from Serie C to Serie B, Serie A. Before that, you actually did coach at AC Seattle, correct? Yeah. So he was the head coach of the women's over in Seattle in the U.S. Now, as many of you might know, the U.S. historically has been very, very good for soccer. Uh, in the yeah. international world. Maybe the leagues have not been at that same level of, you know, Olympic Lyon and Manchester City and these yeah. big Barcelona teams, but internationally, top, top level from America. Again, nice question and very interesting, the differences. Exactly. What do you think versus the U.S. Many, women, Italian, yeah. European? The difference is only outside the pitch. Interesting. In the pitch, during the practices, practice, the exercitations, how you would like to improve your idea, it's almost the same. Maybe you have more stuff with you and can make the difference, but the, the real things you have to care is how you handle, how you manage the locker room yeah, and the relation between the locker room and how you, do you help your player individually to be the best person of themselves and as much as you go toward the high level, Serie A in Champions League, you have players that are also full of a kind of stakeholders because they are full of interest, full of people around. And sometimes they need a brother, not a coach. Yeah. A brother able enough to show them the path. And not only a brother or a coach able to show them how to pass the ball, how to shoot on that, they know it. Maybe they need you when there is too much pressure or too less pressure, when they forget that the focus is to win the game. And to win the game, we need to build a family. So in that, they need help. And so you need to be a coach only this. Did you notice anything, while I, while I agree with you at the end of the day, you have a team and they are going to bond and how you can step in is really what makes the team work and click. As I said, we've seen great players before not really work together. You need somebody to put them together. That said, did you notice a difference between your Italian players, American players? Is there a difference in the game? Are some more physical? Is one side more technical or tactical? Yeah. Or no, it really just depends on the group of players you have in front of you. No, there are differences, of course. I have many Scandinavian players. <laughs> and you need to figure it out how to talk with them because we are Latin, we move the hands, we are passionate. Very different. They are different. Yes. <laughs> no better, no worse, just different. So you need to keep up with them to find, to figure it out the best way to communicate with them. I had American. They came from a soccer full of strength, where the gym has the focus, the priority, 
And they came in a football, in a soccer, where the tactical, the technical, is what for us make the difference. So again, you need to understand where they came from and to try to listen double and talk less, just to understand what they need to feel at home in Italy. Mm -hmm. Because my goal with foreigners is to make them one day say, I feel whole. Okay. Because when I was in Seattle, I was far from home. Yeah. And well, every day... Was that your first time I, in, yeah, in the US working in, outside of Italy? long experience, yes. And what well, every day I was looking for was someone or something make me feel like at home. Yeah. And the coach in this case is the person with the staff that can really try to be close to the player to find one day the way to say, with this coach, I'm home. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, obviously, I think that's the goal everywhere you want to go. If you yeah. try a new experience, you want to make that place your home. Yeah. Uh, moving a little bit away from your coaching side of things. So you've actually been with our program from the beginning. So a few years ago, I think four to five years ago, the first year of Rome City Institute back, back in the day was in Florence, which is where Antonio was coaching at the time. So Antonio was the director of academics all the way back in the beginning, and now we're here in Rome. So Antonio still makes his time to make his way down to Rome every week for his classes. He is, as I mentioned, the Calcio Methodology professor of our master students. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what you've seen throughout the years of the program, how it's changed the development coming from Florence yeah. to Rome, you know? But this idea came from uh, one special point of view of uh, Stefano, the owner. Of course. And all of his staff, and uh, Paolo and Lucas and Giorgio, and they understood that maybe it was nice for American people to join Italy for a long time, mm -hmm and try to take the know-how to become a coach studying soccer where, soccer where soccer in some way is special yeah. not because it's better than the US but because, it, because here it's different so if you as an American guy come here to study has happened to you you will have a completely, completely different point of view yeah. because your know-how we don't want to cancel what you know like we want to try to upgrade on your know-how what we think is correct. And so your tactical point of view, your technical point of view will be huge in the end of this year with me, of course. With all of the professors you will touch in, in, in Roma. And so this was the, was the idea. We think we can give to the American guy the possibility to take a special know-how. And one day these people can go in the field and become coach, assistant coach, always knowing and remember what they did in Rome at the time in Florence. And this happened. One of my best victory in the life. Many of my students so far text me, hey, I turned as coach in this college. Yeah. I, I remember this exercise you showed me. Can you help me? One student, she came from US to, have a, to, to stay with us, to stay with me. We had the lunch together at the time in Florence. Exactly. So for me, like I'm with my player as coach, yeah. the same with my student human relation, be connect each other and be your brother, of course. be the brother of my students and try to don't show them I'm better than you, but just we are together, this table is a roundabout table, no? Yeah. And we share each other, you know how, and we race together with a smile every morning. As you mentioned, I mean, we see some of our alumni doing some amazing things and they're going off to coach. There's there's two of your ex-students who are now the coach and the assistant coach of each other. Yeah. So clearly there's some kind of connection that you're able yeah. to build. Um, and while I while I like to hear that your goal is the same, you know, to, to give them an idea and give them a point of view in a safe space, uh, what do you feel is your big difference between being a coach and then being a professor? How do you approach the situations differently? There are no difference for me. Interesting. When I came in the class every morning, I wake up 5.30 and I leave from my city to join Roma to have three hours with my student. And it's love and passion for me. Yeah. Uh, I love to talk about soccer and management with them. I can stay for five hours. Yeah, sometimes we have to cut you off because you yeah. want to keep going. Well, I, I love these guys. <laughs> they need a coffee, they need lunch. Yeah. You're like, no, 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 let's keep, keep going. going. <laughs> but when I go with my players, among them, I felt the same energy. But it's not because soccer is special. 
is because the human relation that sport build in everybody can be magic. So for me, there are no difference. I have my squad in Rome, and the goal with this squad is to don't get relegation. So huh. <laughs> don't go back with the now, but race, 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 and race. And they have another squad in Genoa in this case, and the same goal is not get the relegation. In that case, relegation is the Serie A. Yeah. But both of these goals, we can achieve it only with one material of this receipt. Yeah. And the material is the connection, the passion and the love we need for the human connection. These I build strongly. I love that. I love that you're actually able to connect the two of them. A lot of people would approach them differently, but I think that talks about who you are as a person in general. Yeah. Um, so I, I do have one other question. You actually got to go to Milan Inter last year. No, as a Paramount Plus pundit. Yeah. How was that experience? Tell me about that one. Honestly, it was a dream in my life yeah. because uh, my English is not perfect, but I tell you a personal story. Years ago, my English was a disaster. <laughs> so. I try my best to improve my English uh, and special person around me help me to improve my English as much as, po as much as was possible and think to sign a contact with uh, an American television and join San Siro and be the front man in the stadium talking in English Amazing. and make the interview to the professional man players in English and translate, f and translate from English to Italian. So it was personal, uh, a goal of my um, my idea to try to to raise my level of course and try to be a, a better person every day and a better coach every day so it was a victory for that it was also fun and it nice. was i remember you came in on our, our monday class and you were yeah. you were beaming and we're like oh antonio how was your weekend you go amazing yeah i went on tv spoke yeah. in english it was yeah. fantastic but you know my first speech was san Sierra stadium is on fire <laughs> easy to say but was full of 80,000 people. It's I didn't amazing. hear my voice. So I didn't know if I was screaming. It was too late to say, San Sirius Stadium is on fire. <laughs> and my, my big face went in American television. Hey, I have one cousin, she lives in the US, and she made the screenshot. Hey, Antonio, your face is really now live in American television. So the pressure raised on me. Yeah, yeah, and I start to feel my heart be like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> it was crazy. It was one, one of the most tough experience of my life. But I understood one thing. My English was better, but was not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Before I let you go, uh, you had so many incredible experiences all over doing different things. What's one of you know your favorite experiences once you joined the Serie A professional level? What, what do you take away when you look back and you go, wow, like that was an incredible feeling. That's, that's what I aimed for. Yeah, I think the the most romantic part of my story as person, as coach, is that um, I came from zero. Uh, I really came from zero. Uh, I came from nothing. I had no connection with high-level uh, soccer world. So I beat my dream. Well, there is one strange word in Italy, it's gavetta. So it's when you came from zero and you do all of the steps and you make mistakes and you go back and you start it again. So, the stairs in front of me was infinity <laughs> and I came under the level of the ground, under. So I built with my muscles, with my mistakes, all of my path. And I take with me my mistakes yeah. to try to try to don't do it again. Yeah. But I say thankful to my mistakes because they give me the option to rebuild me stronger and they give me the possibility to reach my dream. My dream was to win everything in Italy in women's soccer. Yeah. And I did it. Yeah, you did. It's amazing. Uh, okay, I said last one, but I got one more for you. So you say you come from nothing and you really worked your way up. You came from Serie C, Serie B, everything. And, and now you are at Serie A level, which is amazing. So before we go, what's one bit of advice that you could give for somebody who's young or older, or anyone who's really trying to break it into that professional side of the world on the coaching end or even on the player end? What's something that you can tell them at home? Don't be scared to have mistake. Don't be scared to do mistake. Don't be scared to leave the trouble. Because the life of the coach is a roller coaster. One day you are the best, and one day the ball join the post and go outside for two centimeters. 
And the people will say that you are not good enough. Don't be scared. Listen your heart. Don't be scared. Hey, you have to suck it up. But for yourself, you know where you came from, and you know that mistakes are part of the process. And you got to keep going. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, thank you guys so much. This has been an honest joy. Uh, Antonio, thank you so much for having Thank you so much. Thank really you. appreciate it. I always I love spending it. time with you. Uh, guys, this has been our second in our interview series. We have more to come. Thank you guys so much for joining once again. Antonio Chincota. It's been a joy. Rome thank City. you for your time.